I'm John Cohn, and this is a keyhole review for Junk Art, the new game from Pretzel Games. Uh, Junk Art is a tower building game for two to six players. Uh, in, in it, you are trying to uh, stack together pieces to put together a piece of junk art that will get you more followers and more points than everybody else. Um, it's similar in its you know kind of co core concept as some other games in the stacking genre, games like Cat Tower, Ruck Shuck, and Wonky Blocks. Uh, we're a big fan of these in our household. But we play a lot of party games with friends. Uh, spoiler alert, this may be the best of all of these games that I've played. Uh, we really did have a blast. So without uh, any further ado, let's take a look at what's in the box. Uh, what's in the box? All right, normally I would already have the box open for you here, but this one opens in such a cool way, it just slides right open. I know, I know, it's just a cheap gimmick, and but I'm a sucker for gimmicks, and it's super worked for me. Uh, when you open up, you can see there are four main uh, pockets. Each one has a different colored uh, set of pieces. Now the pieces are exactly the same in each one. Um, you just have them in four different colors. You've also got these little black stands. This is where you'll build your tower. You get a fun piece of measuring tape. Sometimes you have to measure uh, who gets the tallest uh, tower. And then you get these are for scoring points, getting followers, that sort of thing. Uh, you've also got two decks. You've got the normal junk art deck, which uses, uh, which brings out the pieces. So like this is the piece that matches here. If I had drawn that card, I would most likely have to play this piece somewhere. Uh, you've also got the world tour deck. This one are all of the locations. Now the way this game works is pretty cool. Locations basically dictate the entire rules of the game. Um, there are some carryovers, you know, basics like you can use one or two hands to place things, but you can't touch pieces that have already been placed. Stuff like that. Those carry through, but there are basically all new rules every time that you draw a new World Tour card, and it keeps the game fresh for a long time. Um, let's get right into the rules. So as I said before, there are a lot of different ways that you end up playing this game. Uh, the goals of building the towers changes wildly from round to round. In one round, you may have 10 cards and you have to get through those 10 cards as fast as you can. And of course, each card is uh, one piece from the box that you have to place on your little base here. Um, it could also be where each, ra each round you only get to place one piece and then you move round robin to the next person's base and you have to build on their piece of art. Uh, or you could even have one where there's just one single tower in the middle of the table and everybody's contributing to that together. So the game works in a lot of different ways, but for the demonstration purpose of today's video, I'm just going to do a standard build. I'm just going to kind of draw cards from here until I build something that falls. Now falling in this game typically means that you lose two or more pieces off of a thing. So there's a little bit of leniency. So. Go the first card, uh, here we go. So I lost three pieces there. Um, granted, I was making it a little more precariously than I should have, but uh, that gives you one good example. I'll do one other quick build just so that you get a sense of the variety of the game. So we'll move these out of the way and start again.
Alright, now let's take a look at a couple pros and cons to the game. As you can see, I've built a couple more structures here. Uh, they are very precarious, but you can really get a sense of the variety and how many different things you can do. For instance, you can even start hanging things off of other spots if you start getting uh, into a jam vertically. And that's one of my favorite things of the game is how much it kind of forces you to think outside of the box. Not every round is trying to force you to build the tallest tower in the world. Some of them want you to try to get pieces that are either the same color or the same shape to touch each other so that you can score extra points. Sometimes you just need to be able to put the most pieces in and so vertical may not be your best selection. So things like these longer pieces or these kind of block S pieces that have these little grooves to uh, insert things can become extremely valuable uh, when that happens. Uh, other pluses are that, you know, I just can't stress enough how fresh this game feels every time that you draw a new card. The game only suggests that you play three cards in one game. Like I said, we went through all 12 uh, in like two and a half hours and, and had a blast on every single one. But on the other side of it, there are certain favorites that we had that we then said, you know, next time we play this, we're going to sit down and we're just going to do a couple of these scenarios that we really liked. Uh, you really have enough here to have a lot of replayability, whereas some of the great tower building games that we've played, like uh, Wonky Blocks, uh, has a, a bit of a limited lifespan, whereas I think you could milk this for a little bit longer. Uh, a couple of cons. Um, this, your mileage may vary here. Uh, we had somebody in our group who was a little shorter, their arms didn't quite reach into the box as well uh, when we had it in the middle of the table. So for players like that, if you've got younger players, players who can't quite reach, because you don't want to be moving the table around, uh, it might be better to lay out your pieces out on the table, uh, take them out of the box, and just have it as a, uh, an area there to grab from. Uh, the other thing is that this game is Two to six players, you know, some games with the tower games, party games, you can kind of artificially expand how many players there are. This one, because of these bases that you have to lay down, it's a hard six that this caps out on. I'll get to scoring in just a second. There is only one real gripe as far as playing the game for, uh, for myself uh, that I personally had, which was some of the games when you score, when you lose, it can disproportionately affect how you're ranked with the other players. What I mean is, some of the games you're playing for five points or three points uh, at the end of the round. So you're making a bit, uh, but there's a few where it's like you have the potential to gain 10 points, 15 points in one round sometimes. Uh, and if you personally mess up on that round, it kind of makes it impossible for you to catch up. Uh, now this may, again, we played literally a, a marathon game of all 12 scenarios, so our final scores were a lot higher than I think what you would normally have in a three scenario game. Uh, but my personal experience was uh, I, I felt that you got maybe a little over penalized on just a couple of the scenarios for failing. Uh, but that's really the only main gripe I have with this game. Uh, time to score it. I would give it a solid 9 out of 10. This is a great party game. Uh, it's a fun dexterity game. It's a fun tower building game. It's fun to look at what the other people are building compared to what you're building. And it's fun when it all falls down and you have a good laugh. Just in all in all, uh, we had a really, really great time with this game and I honestly can't wait to play it again. So that's it for a review here uh, for Junk Art from Keyhole Reviews. Please subscribe and uh, give us some likes, and uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.